أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم relates to the science behind the benefits of fasting. There are some people, and I want to know whether they're right or not, who say that fasting actually has some harmful effects on a person, psychological, social, physical, etc. Is that correct? Several researches have been done by many scientists as far as fasting is concerned, and what effect does it have in various aspects of the human body. And scientists will tell us that when a person takes in food, it increases the metabolism of the body. When the food intake is reduced, or when a person fasts, the body metabolism rate goes down by about 22%. And if you fast continuously for several days or for a month, then this stabilizes at a lower rate. So the body metabolism rate is reduced by fasting. Further, there was research done on various groups of male and female Muslims who had fasted, and it showed that there was a slight reduction in the body weight. But there was an increase in the glucose level. As far as all the other things are concerned, it remained constant, whether it was the testosterone of the corticel, whether it was sodium, potassium, urea, whether it was cholesterol, whether it was HDL, high-density lipoprotein, whether it was LDL, low-density lipoprotein, whether it was TG, the triglyceride, all these, the body level, they remained the same. The fasting did not have any effect on them, except it increased the glucose level and there was a slight reduction in weight. When another research was conducted in Iran, where some men fasted for about 17 hours, for about 30 days in the month of Ramadan, it showed that it had no effect on the male reproductive hormone, on the testosterone. And it had no effect on the HPTA as well as on the thyroid hormones. There were several researches conducted. There was also a research, there was a study made, which was called as increase in oxidation in the month of Ramadan on healthy women, a way for maintaining the weight, weight maintenance. And it showed that during fasting, there was no change as far as the physiology of the body was concerned, the weight was same and all the functions were the same. Fasting increases the fat oxidation and decreases the carbohydrate oxidation. And we have to realize that we have to let the physicians of the Western world, they should know that they should note the levels of bilirubin and glucose while fasting. The further studies conducted that fasting increases the mucosa developed B lymphocyte cell responsiveness, but did not show a change in the B lymphocyte responsiveness of the rheumatoid arthritis and the health volunteers. But in fasting, it increased the longevity of the life, increases the lifespan. There were many researches conducted in animals, it increases the lifespan. Further research was conducted on the lactating women when they fasted. The fasting did not increase or decrease, there was no change in the milk volume as well as the content of the milk. The glucose level was the same, the fat concentration was the same, the lactose content was the same. There was no change per se as far as the lactating mothers were concerned. There were research done regarding fasting's effect on menstruating women as well as the reproductive cycle. And when the research was done, there was no change whatsoever. There wasn't any change in the menstrual cycle in fasting or there was no negative effect, no positive effect. So it is wrong to say that fasting has an ill effect. There are many benefits which we discussed earlier. But there are certain positive points that fasting has helped in certain diseases. For example, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, it helps. And what we realized that when researches were done, that on animals, when they are sick, they don't prefer having any food. Same thing with the children. 
When children get sick, they don't prefer having food. It is the family members who force them to have food. And research has shown that when food is taken when a person is sick, it prevents him from getting well early. It hampers the immune system. So when a person fasts, when he's seriously ill, it helps him to recover faster. That is the reason now we find that there are many treatments which include fasting for various diseases which are followed by the Western world. Because when a person fasts, his body gets rest and the toxins are removed from the body. So it helps him to recover faster. And fasting is also good to change the behavioral pattern. And if a person is addicted or a person is alcoholic, as I mentioned earlier, or is a chain smoker, if he fasts, it's a good point that he can stop it throughout his life. And people who are habituated to things like tea, coffee, junk food, when they fast and they stay away from it, when the taste buds they don't have for the full month, the taste buds don't crave for that, and when they have healthy food, they start liking it. So it's a good time to stay away from junk food. If you can do it for one month, you can do it throughout your life. Yes. And there are certain diseases. For example, insulin-dependent diabetes. A person who's suffering from insulin-dependent diabetes, he should not fast because he has ketosis. Normally, the ketones are used as a source of energy. But if a person has insulin-dependent diabetes, he's unable to use this. So therefore, a person who has insulin-dependent diabetes, he should not fast. But naturally, if he takes insulin and fasts and with the medical advice, it's fine. But the other type of diabetes, which is more common, non-insulin-dependent diabetes, fasting is helpful for that. And as I mentioned earlier, it's helpful in various diseases like cardiovascular disease, asthma, arthritis, digestive tract diseases, in lupus, in skin disease. You can name a list of diseases in which fasting is of great benefit.